Russia says its forces are edging closer to capturing Soldor, a salt mining town in eastern Ukraine, which would mark an elusive victory for the Kremlin, but comes at the cost of heavy Russian casualties and extensive destruction of the territory they claim. More than 100 Russian troops were killed in the battle for Soldor during the past 24 hours, Ukraine's Donsk Governor Pavlo Karylenko said in televised remarks. The Russians have literally marched on the bodies of their own soldiers, burning everything on their way," Karylenko said while reporting that Russian forces had shelled a dozen towns and villages in the region in the past day. Russian forces are using mortars and rockets to bombard Soldor in an unrelenting assault, struggling for a breakthrough after military setbacks have turned what the Kremlin hoped would be a fast victory into a grinding war of attrition that has dragged on for nearly 11 months with no end in sight. Civilians are trying to survive amid that bloodbath as the Russians are pressing their attacks, Karylenko said. Soldiers' fall would be a prize for a Kremlin starved of good battlefield news in recent months after losing the significant city of Kherson in December. It would also offer Russian troops a springboard to conquer other areas of the eastern Donetsk province that remain under Ukrainian control, particularly the nearby strategic city of Bakhmut. The Road to Bakhmut Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford, reporting from near Bakhmut, said there was a lot of heavy shelling all around this area. Earlier, Ukrainian soldiers told Al Jazeera that Russian troops were in the center of Soldor and in control of its salt mine. They described Russian tanks in the center of Soldor as well and said there are concerns among the Ukrainian forces about possible escape routes for the Ukrainian troops inside Soldor, Stratford said. Gigantic work has been done in Soldor, he said. Peskov, however, stopped short of confirming a claim by Wagner Group owner Yevgeny Prigozhin, who boasted about capturing Soldor on Wednesday. There is still a lot to be done and it's too early to stop and rub our hands, the main work is still ahead," he said in a conference call with reporters. Meanwhile, Ukraine's deputy defense minister, Hanna Malyar, said at a briefing Thursday, the enemy continues the assaults, but suffers significant losses and is not successful. It was not possible to verify the claims made by either side. Military shakeup. Russia's Ministry of Defense made no mention of Soldor in its daily briefing on Thursday. The ministry announced Wednesday that the country's top military officer, the chief of the military's general staff, General Valery Gerasimov, was put in charge of the military operation in Ukraine. He replaced General Sergei Surovikin, who was demoted to deputy only three months after he was installed in the top job. Ukrainian officials also said they were taking note of personnel changes at the top levels of the Russian military command, describing them as a sign that Moscow is not achieving what it had hoped. Personnel changes would not occur with such frequency if they were doing well, a senior Ukrainian military official, Brigadier General Olksy Vramov said. Fighting continued elsewhere in Ukraine. The deputy head of Ukraine's presidential office, Kirillo Tymoshenko, reported Thursday that two civilians were killed and a further eight were wounded in Russian attacks on Wednesday. Citing data from regional officials, Tymoshenko said that one civilian died and five were wounded in the southern Kherson province, where shells hit a maternity hospital, private houses and apartment buildings, while one person was killed in Donsk. Two people were wounded in the southeastern Zaporizhia province, with one further civilian sustaining injuries in the southeastern Dnipropetrovsk province.